All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 14th of June in the year of our Lord, 2022. Well, as important as thinking biblically, as, as seeing the world uh, and dispelling the, uh, the myths that obscure the truth about the world by thinking biblically, trusting God's revelation as a basis for our thinking, even more important is dispelling the lies and the myths that uh, pervade what's called Christianity, including evangelicalism and fundamentalism today. It's pretty bad. So I'm going to return to to an old-time uh, problem of mine. And I think, uh, I know when I was down in Texas, this, uh, it, it's I think it's bothered me much of my Christian life, which is... What? I don't know. 43 years or so? Let's say 2022 minus, uh, what, uh, 1776? No, uh, 1976. Mm. 46 years? Is that right? See, that's, that's, you know, that's how you can tell when you're getting older, when you have to pull out the calculator. Because I don't want to exert the mental effort to it the hard way. Uh, uh, 46 years. Wow, how time flies. Uh, yeah, I was. it was almost my birthday. Or about my birthday. Maybe it was a birthday present from God. Uh, I became 21 years old. And that's when I was born again. Right that time period. Uh... Yeah. Uh, now that was a process that led up to the uh, uh, being born again. But I mean, I'd been under conviction of sin and been, been deep into to sin, uh, about as deep as you can get. <sighs> Demon possessed, kind of deep. Wow. Somebody, of course, a lot of people don't believe that stuff. Oh yeah, it's true. It's not the Catholic version of it. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, sort of some of the the uh, things you actually see, like in the movies, it's not that far off. Supernatural strength, things like that. But uh, yeah, they and you know when I see some of these crazy things that happen in the world, the mass murders and everything like that, I would not be surprised if these people are possessed by evil spirits. That is certainly a reality. Uh, fortunately, it's not terribly common, or they suppress it with drugs, <laughs> which is which is probably true too. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, 46 years, wow. How time flies. So, I want to go back to, to begin this uh, with in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 again. Because there's something there that occurred to me that's also been present in Christianity for quite a while. In fact, there were problems with this way back in the beginning. Uh, let's see. Who was it that wrote about that? I uh, can't remember his name. One of the church fathers in the second century wrote, uh, uh, I think, five volumes against heresies. And one of the, her you know, the uh, uh, one of the problems they had back then was the lawlessness in the church, the antinomianism, it's called, or anomianism in the church. When it talks about here in Second Thessalonians, uh, lawlessness, that's the word anomia, anomias, that is nom nomias, which, by the way, is a masculine noun, 
And that's why I suspect that that which restrains might refer to law because namas is masculine and the pronoun that's translated to he here. See, the pronoun, as in Spanish, the pronoun has to correspond in gender. There's only three genders in Greek. Uh, YouTube? It, it's a historical language issue. You don't get to mess with that. There's a, this world is so nuts. You know, you, you don't know what they're going to do. And it's all algorithm-based anyway. Lawless algorithms, too. Uh, I think they just put randomness in there just to, to mess with people, to manipulate people. Um, or maybe the algorithms are written by AI. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you're all going to be slaves of uh, Elon Musk's robots <clears throat> that he's promising to come out with early soon just along with the internet chip for your brain yikes hopefully he'll send himself to mars before that happens hey you need to lead the way uh, mr musk you need to go first now that'll be the end of him uh mars is not a hospitable environment mm -hmm. God did not make it for human habitation. I don't know why people want to live places like the moon and and the space station. Putting people in orbit around the Earth is incredibly stupid. Incredibly stupid. You would think when they had how many Challenger disasters? Two, right? Of course, there was a, the Apollo disaster before that. You'd think they would stop it. You would think that they should be maybe charged with manslaughter for, I mean, involuntary manslaughter. When you, when you uh, subject people to uh, high-risk situations, uh, I mean, I'm sure they got consent, but it's still stupid. It's, they're still irresponsible. Machines can tolerate that. I mean, and if they get hit by a micrometeor or, or something goes wrong, big deal. It's just a machine. But uh, just like nobody sends people down into the abyss in the ocean anymore, like they did when I was a kid, when they sent the Tres down with a Navy crew to the bottom of the Marianas Trench. I suspect that was highly political because the Navy had nothing they needed down there. Political. It's like climbing Mount Everest. And the point is... Ay, 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 ay. This are sending men to the moon. The point was, it was a contest with the Russians. It was all political. Yikes. But it says here, uh, verse 3, Let no one deceive you by any means for that day, the coming of the Lord, for his people, are gathering together unto the Lord, uh, will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin, or lawlessness, in uh, some translations that are based on a minority of texts. A minority reading is lawlessness, anomias. Uh, man of sin, sin is, but it, they're synonyms. They're synonyms. John says sin is lawlessness, so they're synonyms. Don't get, don't get too upset about it. The, the son of perdition, son of destruction, that's a name uh, also referred, used to refer to Judas Iscariot. Uh, so this and it talks about apostasy here. Judas was an apostate. Now, I think the man of lawless, uh, the man of lawlessness, and the man of sin, and the son of destruction are generics. They refer to a category of people. I think that's a probable. That's consistent with the Greek. Uh, it's. Uh, but it's not the only possible rendering. The other possible rendering would be a particular individual. But I don't think it, it, Jesus in Matthew 24, when he's talking about his return and other places, does not seem to put any particular emphasis on a particular Antichrist. He talks about many false prophets and many false Christs will arise and lead astray, if possible, even the elect. 
So my primary concern is not so much with the world, but with the church. Because Satan's always trying to mislead that. That's God's house. Those are my brothers and sisters. They're my family. The world's not my family. They're human beings, they're fellow human beings. And the objects of God's salvation, if they will receive him. But when people corrupt the gospel, the gospel of salvation, which is the power of God, see, it's a, it, the, because God has to do it. It's not something man can do. You can't save yourself, nor can any other human being save you. God must do it because it re, re, uh, re, requires regeneration, a, a new creation in you. You must be made into a new man in the image of Christ. And that's not perfected yet. It's an, it's, it's an ongoing work, but it will be perfected when Christ returns. And when we see him, we will be like him. Transformed. So who opposes? See, the man of sin or the man of lawlessness... opposes and exalts himself over above all that is called God or that is worship so that he sits in the as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God or displaying himself as if he were God now in the temple of God as I've pointed out before in many videos including on the the website that I took down and did an experiment with it's interesting you can get half as many views with 16 subscribers on YouTube uh, than, you, than you do with 1,000 plus subscribers. <laughs> Explain that. As I said, I was rather suspicious about uh, how things work on YouTube. You know, Musk uh, has backed out apparently of the uh, Twitter deal because he found out, supposedly, that Twitter is filled with bots, fake accounts that they use to manipulate. See, those things are used to manipulate. Yeah. Huh. So th th this man of sin or man of lawlessness opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. It doesn't say he actually denies the existence of God, does it? He just exalts himself above God. Or that is uh, worship, venerated, everything that's considered holy. So that he sits as God in the temple of God. Now, Paul's very clear, the temple of God, this exact expression here, the nows uh, of God. He uses of Christians and the church. He never calls the temple in Jerusalem the nows of God. See, the nows is the dwelling place of God, the apartment of God in a, in a temple. In the temple in Jerusalem, it was the Holy of Holies. The, that apartment built, uh, room that was separated from everybody. Nobody was allowed in there except the high priest, and that only one day a week or one day a year, and he had to bring the proper sacrifices with him, blood. And they, uh, it is reported by, I think it was by Josephus, who was a Jewish historian that wrote during the, uh, the uh, Roman war against the Jews in 70 AD. Uh, of course, he knew about the temple. He saw the destruction of the temple. He was one of the commanders of the uh, adversaries of the Romans, but he was captured and he uh, got the, the good graces of Titus and because he he prophesied his uh, ascension to uh, emperor, something like that. Uh, it always see when you tell people they're going to become the become the emperor. Apparently, they want to keep you around <laughs> instead of crucifying you, like they did with everybody else they captured. Oh. So, the, but anyway, the the. Uh, I can, I don't know if I should show you to show you to in the Greek or not, but if you, uh, everybody has access to this on free stuff on the internet now, but it is in the Greek. Where is it? Uh, 
here, right here, this here, and there, there's no, uh, there's no textual variations here. So, or I should say, right here, the, the naon tau tao, that is the, uh, t the. It, this is again the nows is the inner apartment in the temple. Pagan temples had a nows too. This is the dwelling place of God. The now the nows. Tau tau. That's is of God. That's the genitive. That's God's house. And Paul only uses this Greek expression of Christians, the Christian, and the church. So when these people, these dispensationalists, and this is related to dispensationalism, by the way, to what I'm going to get into, uh, or correlated with dispensationalism, uh, talk about the temple having to be rebuilt in, in Jerusalem. No, the Bible doesn't say that. because They, they use this passage. Well, if the Antichrist, they assume the man of sin is Antichrist, it takes a seat in the temple of God, the, then the, the old Jewish, Jewish temple has to be rebuilt. That's not what it says. See, if they did their work, rather than get their ideas from one another, they might learn something from the scriptures. You have to dig into this, and you have to, you have to be willing to 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 ask God to 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 open your understanding, because otherwise it'll be tradition and your experience and learning is going to all be cloud you. So you'll be taught theology, so you're not even knowing you're being taught theology. Because it's just part of the, of the culture, the church culture you're in. I see that all the time, and I want to stand up and say, "Wait a minute!" But you know, sometimes I need to just, uh, yeah. I don't have to do that here, do I? I've got my own microphone. So, but the the, the point is, I want to make here. Uh, so, but if you see, this is, is actually what it says. It gets, again, the nows, technically, in pagan temples also, was the, uh, the niche or the, the, uh, the place where the deity was supposed to dwell. Usually the image would be there. In the, new te or in the old uh, the temple in Jerusalem, the stone temple in Jerusalem, it was the Holy of Holies. The first room in the temple was the holy place. That was where the priests, they would come daily to minister. Uh, the lamp uh, was there, and the, ta the sh table of showbread was there. But there was a curtain. This was a curtain that was ripped from top to bottom when Christ died. Which, according to Josephus, was about four inches thick and couldn't be torn by teams of horses. Josephus does give some testimony, too, about Christ and uh, some of the events around him, although he's not a Christian and he doesn't deal with it directly uh, uh, in detail. But uh, he mentions Christ. Of course, he was, this, this would have been, these events would have uh, occurred either before he was born or while he was very young because he was probably about, I suppose, about 40 or so when he was 30s and 40s when he was uh, captured, 70 AD or thereabouts. So, but the, it doesn't actually say he denies the existence of God here, but the, the, the man of lawlessness, again, I'm taking this as a category. Now, I'm not saying that I'm absolutely certain that that's correct. It could be both. It could be an individual and also a group. But I think it fits the scriptures better as a category of people, the descendants of Adam. <laughs> and what, say, because their lawlessness and Adam go together too, the, the works of the flesh. It's all, everybody's descended from Adam uh, and you're only, get out of that kingdom, out of the domain of darkness, out of the domain of the devil, when you're born again. 
But as long as you're in your body of flesh, you're still connected to the other, too. <sighs> but this, this uh, man of lawlessness, man of sin, opposes and exalts, exalts him, so he opposes God. That antichristos, uh, anti means not only opposing, but also in place of. Substituting yourself, like the Pope, the vicar of Christ, or a priest being the uh, a vicar of Christ, a substitute for Christ. Christ doesn't need a substitute. He sent a surrogate, which is really himself, to uh, the Holy Spirit. Yeah, uh, the pastor was talking about the Holy Spirit. I just want to say, yes, he's also the presence of God, the presence of Christ. He wasn't saying anything wrong. He's just, I wanted to add more. That happens every time. It's just so frustrating. Even if I get to preach, I afterwards say, oh, I should have done this, and I should have done that. And, oh, I was just so weak. It's always going to be that way, I'm afraid. It's like this. You get me in my weakness, that it might be the power of God. If you get saved by watching me, it was not me, it's the power of God. As Paul himself said, so, yep. So, I think that this is in the church. He he does this, or they, this, the, the, uh, the lawless one or ones do this in the church. And I thought about something. You know, there's something else like that's been going on for quite a while. And I want to take a look at that.
The major misunderstanding, I would say, is a fail. Now, people that aren't born again won't see the truth properly. Is to, to the understanding that the good works are the fruit of salvation. They're God's works. He produces them in us. We're saved by grace through faith, and that alone, on to good works, for the purpose of good works. Now, good works, it's, they're not necessary to save us. They are the evidence of salvation. You can have an apple tree, and the fact that the apple tree say has a year or doesn't bear any fruit or it's a new plant or something like that and it hasn't borne fruit yet it's still an apple tree but it will eventually given the proper circumstances bear fruit because it's a nature of the tree just like sinful human beings the children of adam bear the fruit of sin because that's their nature they are not in submission to god they are not in proper relationship to God. And they cannot do anything good. So everything they do is sinful because it's not done in faith. Not done in faith out of faith in God. Now, a Christian that's been born again, we have a body of flesh, and that body of flesh can still sin. And it has... It, that hasn't been transformed. Our bodies have not been redeemed yet. But the new creation in us, the new spirit, the new heart, the Holy Spirit in us, that which Paul calls the new creation, when Jesus referred to as being born of the Spirit, born again, born from above, in John chapter 3 does will produce good fruit faith itself is a good fruit trust in god it doesn't have to be some dramatic work but even it's like the thief in the cross what good works did he have he just cried out to god to save him jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom he believed christ He didn't have a bunch of good works. He was being crucified. They didn't crucify people for the the thievery, by the way. He was likely a bandit and a terrorist. You know, uh, um, what do they call the, the equivalent of pirates? A highwayman. You know, that maybe robber, the kind of people that, that assaulted the uh, uh, Samaritan on the road to Jericho, you know, that uh, the Jew, the, no, the Jewish, the Jewish person, the Samaritan was when they helped him, uh, assaulted the person on the road to America, uh, to, uh, uh, on the road to Jericho, and left him as dead, stripped, naked, you know, stripped him of their possessions, their clothes, and left him to die. That kind of person, or a person that engaged in terrorism, the, the Romans had problems with that too, the Sicarii, uh, it, which one of Jesus' disciples was probably one of those, a terrorist. God, Jesus saved him from being a terrorist. They would they would assassinate uh, uh, Romans and supporters of Rome, terrorists. During Jesus' day, his time, thinking, of course, they were doing a good service for God. We still see the same thing in the world today. But the idea of those of good works being works we do rather than works that are produced by God's work in us, that's the misunderstanding. And the very fact that so many fundamentalist Baptists don't understand that, and so many evangelicals don't understand that, and so many of those who would call themselves Arminians don't understand either, and Roman Catholics don't understand either. But the idea that you can live your life 
as a practicing homosexual or a practicing thief or a practicing alcoholic or drug addict or a practicing embezzler or you know all those things or murderer and go to heaven because you said a prayer is anomious an, an, uh, is lawlessness so we have these lawless people and theologians that justify them in the church who exalt their will. See, here's the issue. MacArthur was saying that you have to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. And MacArthur was right. See, the, the, disp the, uh, the free grace is just intellectual assent to the idea of Christ and the idea that he died for your sin. It's not a relationship with Christ himself. It's not belonging to Christ. And they reject vociferously the idea that Christ is Lord, that he has, has authority over you. In other words, you can be, become a, a Christian, you can be saved without even acknowledging Christ's right to rule over your life. That is not Christianity at all. That is a perversion far deeper than Roman Catholicism or Greek Orthodoxy or what else? That's a deep deep perversion of the gospel a gospel that is not the power of God unto salvation but merely intellectual intellectual assent and a, a transaction a bookkeeping entry in heaven a change in status from sinner to saved and this dominates fundamentalism, at least Baptist fundamentalism, in the United States. And much of evangelicalism and the Southern Baptists dominates it. This whole feud between the Calvinists and it's not Calvinism versus Arminianism in the Southern Baptists. It's Calvinism versus lawless gospel. Lawless is a po in the sense that not being willing to acknowledge the authority of Christ over your life. Exalting yourself above all that is called God and every object of devotion. The spirit of lawlessness in the church, in the temple of God. And it's present in the Southern Baptists and in Fundamental Baptists and other places. Every place that thinks you can be saved, you can receive Christ as your Savior without receiving Christ as your Lord. Christ is indivisible. And it's not an intellectual assent to Christ's coming and purpose and resurrection, but, an in, but a commitment to Christ himself surrendering yourself to the Lordship of Christ. Calling upon him to have mercy on you and save you and save you from your sins, your sinfulness, and save you from your wicked heart. No, a sinner doesn't want to subject himself to Christ. He flees from it. Only when you're driven by desperation by the conviction of the Holy Spirit by your own sinfulness and the knowledge of where you're headed. But when Christ comes into you, that attitude changes. And you love him. And you want to follow him. And you hate your sin. It's not that you never sin. It's just you despise it. Your attitude towards sin has changed. You don't pursue it. You, you, you want it to be free from it. And you, you, you want to be with Christ. 
You want to be what he wants you to be, even though you might fail at that daily. Yet there's a change in orientation and attitude. And if you don't have that, you haven't been born again. If you have not been born again, you will not enter the kingdom of God. You will not behold the kingdom of God. Words of Jesus Christ. So we have the spirit of lawlessness, the spirit of, of iniquity, of sin, in the church, in the temple of God, and it's been there for a long time. There were antinomians or anomians in the first century, in the second century, in the third century. There were anomians among the Puritans in New England. And nomians, too. And those that were seeking to follow the law rather than Christ. Seeking to be right through keeping commandments rather than right through faith in Christ. God reckons our faith as righteousness. Faith in Christ. Trust. Intellectual assent is not faith. Not biblical faith. Beware of man's theology. Beware of the spirit of lawlessness in the church, wherever you find it. If it's not focused on Christ, if it's not about following Christ, if it's not about trusting in Christ, if it's not about obeying our Lord and our King and our God, if their church is about you and not Christ, flee from that thing. It's not of God. It belongs to the God of this age. Otherwise known as Satan. 